1212, welcome to chapel at 1212. You can clap for chapel. That would be good. So we are trying to be good neighbors and good partners uh, with our theater department who has a production going on in the auditorium. So we, instead of them having to move everything and redo their chairs, we decided to just move over here for chapel this Wednesday. And so we're thankful that you're here. Uh, for those who are uh, watching us uh, on the live stream, welcome to Chapel at 1212. And uh, today we have some announcements for you. We'll do an opening prayer. We have Wayne Morris, uh, who leads worship at Island Baptist Church, uh, partner in ministry for a long time, great friend and brother who's going to lead us today. We're thankful to have him. And then we have a message on identity today. And uh, then we'll pray and we'll, we'll move on. But thank you for being here. Just, just a couple of notes. Um, if you are in person and you want a pen or something to write with, it's back there in, in the window uh, on that ledge. And uh, if you also need some, see some tissue, if, if what God says touches you a little bit or you just get snotty, then there's, uh, there's tissues back there in the, in the window for you. And uh, so right now, uh, before we pray, uh, we're going to talk about a couple of announcements. Uh, and when those come up, I'll talk to you about them. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, just watch this video. How about that? somebody else uh, in prayer. We're going to meet around the fire pit tonight 
uh, and pray. The information is right there. If you have any questions, you can ask anyone involved with campus ministries. You can contact me or Anna or our prayer team intern who coordinates all this, Olivia Clements. So uh, that's our announcements uh, for today. And if you would, we're going to, even though we're going to, uh, we're not in the auditorium, we're still in chapel. So before we pray, we're going to get our hearts and minds right by two, doing two claps and a flare. So and you need to be strong. If you're sitting on them, put them here. And uh, we're going to do two claps and a flare, okay? Ready? Two claps and a flare. Father, I want to thank you for this day that you have blessed us with. God, thank you for the, the, the blessings of health, the blessings of food to eat, the blessings of a place to sleep. God, we want to thank you for all that you do for us. God, I thank you for their lives and for what you're at work doing in their lives. God, we just ask that as only you can fill this place with your spirit. Help us to focus on the things that you need us to focus on. God, may our hearts and our minds be turned toward you and focused on you so that you get all glory and all honor and all praise because you are worthy. God, thank you for this time together. Bless Wayne as he leads us. And God, and just have your way here in this place. We pray all these things in the strong and powerful name of Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you would stand. And worship with us. Awesome. I've got a short story about the build a bed. I got to deliver. It wasn't actually one of those beds, but we were doing another uh, build a bed thing. And let me tell you how much those kids appreciate what that means. We went into this house, delivered this bed, and the room wasn't big enough for the bed. We had to take it catty corner, from corner to corner. The closet was the opposite side of the door, and the girl was just ecstatic about it. She had a bed. She didn't care how she, you could probably put it on the ceiling, and she wouldn't have cared. And that was just so awesome to see how appreciative she was. And and then also disappointing to see how kind of uh, disappointed we were that we couldn't get it just right, you know. But she didn't care. It was a bed. So just something to think about. It's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break as broken hearts declare his grace. Who can stop the Lord? Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. And every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. And every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. 
Wayne, thank you so much. Hey, uh, I, was, I was in the back, and uh, like I could just pray for you all and go to the house because I've already been to church, and uh, it's been it's been good to experience the Holy Spirit there in the back. And you all sounded y'all sounded pretty good. Y'all sounded pretty good. It is such a blessing to me when you all sing out. It's it's a it's a beautiful thing. Um, so to keep us to keep us on track and on time, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to stay real close to my notes and so that you all can see some of the things that are on the screen. I'm not gonna move around uh, very much. And uh, last week was our first chapel service after opening convocation, and we kind of. Uh, did this uh, did this intro overview of campus ministries and of the many services and the opportunities uh, that are available to us on campus for us to be able to develop community uh, and only and grow our own faith and uh, we talked about the foundation of our chapel topics for the remainder of this semester and next semester uh, they're going to be rooted in the kind of how to follow the example that Jesus has set for us, that we find listed for us, or right there for us in the Holy Scriptures. Uh, Jesus told us, um, you know, going back to last week, John 14, 6, I am the way, not a way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that's the first part of that verse. Um, you know, what we're going to get to today is, is kind of the how-to and the identity that's found in that verse and in a relationship with Jesus, if we are in fact followers of Jesus Christ, there is a way that we are supposed to live our lives that we have been blessed with. Uh, one of the things I said last week in chapel was the most important question, and there will be a lot of questions that you feel like are pretty important that you'll answer throughout the course of this year uh, within your classes, within your life, but there is no question any more important than the question of who is Jesus to me. Answering that question is the key to knowing who you really are. And I want to get to the point in my life where my life and my identity is not impacted or influenced in any way by another human. I want to get to the point in my life where I don't need another human to tell me or validate or define who I am because I know I know with all that I am that my identity lies in being a child of God but we still live in a world that's going to tell us otherwise and so I want to make sure that my identity is defined in the right way and I also don't want the circumstances of my life to impact the level of joy and peace in the fullness of life that we're called to live by the circumstances that I'm dealing with. And there's a way to make that happen. But that takes owning your relationship with Jesus and growing it to the point where there's no way that anyone or anything can influence or change who you are in Christ. So, uh, often we associate our identity with certain things. We feel pressure to define ourselves through our grades, our looks and appearance, what kind of job we have or don't have, how much money we make or don't make compared to somebody else, our successes, what groups and organizations we belong to or that we lead, and our job titles look really good and what other people say about us, what we drive and what we wear and what other people post about us. If we allow our identity to be defined by these things, these kinds of things, day in and day out, we will live in this constant state of redefining who we are. Our identity will always be changing. When I was in high school, and I only share this, some of you know, know my story, some of you all don't know my story, but... Uh, you know, I had a lot of things to be thankful for, and I had a lot of things that I needed to overcome. And 
I didn't think real highly of myself because I wasn't a very good student and I didn't read well. So I had kind of low self-esteem there. My identity was definitely not in being a good student. My identity was not in the things that my family had and the places that we lived. Like I, I never had a best friend until I got married because I wanted to keep people at a distance because I didn't really want them to see who I really was. I, I regret that now, but at the time, that was to protect me from who I thought I was and how other people defined me or would define me. Mm -hmm. The thing that I found the most belonging in, the most value, the most love and acceptance was being a part of an athletic team. Because I've played several different sports and had some success, like that's where my identity was. And I could also draw and paint and was creative. So those were the things that I kind of rooted and defined my life in, was being good and belonging to those things. And then, because I, no one in my family had ever been gone to college, like going to college terrified me because I was afraid of failure. And I was afraid of how I might be defined. And so I get here to play football and basketball and to on this art scholarship and all these things. And I get here and I go, this is great because no one knows me. They only know what I'm getting ready to do. And so I get to a comfortable point in my identity and getting started in college. No one knows how smart I am. No one knows where I live. No one knows that I moved 20 times before I got here. They don't know any of those things. So I can, I can de redefine my life here, but my root was athletics and art. I came here playing football, got hurt at the end of my football season. My parents divorced during that time. The relationship that I carried over from high school was not good and I didn't do well my first semester. All these things, I got hurt, so I couldn't start the basketball season. So my sophomore year, football coaching staff changed. I was still hurt because I didn't have medical insurance. And all of these things that I defined myself by all of a sudden went away. My sophomore and junior year were two of the most challenging times in my life. Because I was not rooted in my identity as a child of God. I let other things and fear and lies control who I was and how I lived my life every day. And it was painful. So when you think you have, just when you think you have things figured out about your identity, just when you think you know who you are, and we've solidified our identity what happens to our identity when we have a bad semester of grades and you're a great student? What happens when something changes the looks and the appearance that we found uh, ourselves to look like before and to appear to other people? When we lose our dream job or we lose some aspect of our family, when the friend group that we were in, we're no longer welcome in that friend group. What happens when our successes seem so much smaller than our failures? What happens is that we begin to scramble frantically to define ourselves by something or someone else to replace the something or the someone else who just left our lives. A consistent, stable, unchanging sense of who we are cannot completely exist if we place our identity in external things. In our way of culture, in the way of our world, the world expects us to live our lives a certain way. And because of that, those external things are always going to be changing. And so if you find your identity and you recognize who you are and you conduct your life in that way, you are going to be in a constant state of change. With that said, what if, 
what if we were able to recognize our identity in the way Creator God, God our Father, sees each one of us? Identity that is rooted, grounded, and established in God means that when we begin to think about who we are, the first thing that we think about is I am God's creation and a person who is deeply and unconditionally loved by God Almighty. That's a lot different than the alternative. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 8, and, and I happen to be reading with the uh, New Living Translation uh, this week, I want to read to you those five verses. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace and he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He showed his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. The Apostle Paul is addressing the church in Ephesus in this passage. And he explains the new identity that is given to each person when they put their faith, trust, and life in Christ. As a child of God... In Christ, we are chosen, adopted, redeemed, forgiven, shown kindness and grace, and are unconditionally loved and accepted. I don't know about you, but that sounds really, really good. We are pure, blameless, and forgiven. That's how God defines us and sees us. As a child of God, our Heavenly Father recognizes us not by our past. Not who we've been before, not our failures, not by sin, but by seeing the blood of Jesus over us. Question for you, and I have several of them. How do you see yourself today? How do you define yourself today? How are you recognizing in your life who you are? As you sit here in this panther room, or you listen to this service wherever you are, in your car, or your dorm room, or your office, or at another time, do you define your identity by the things that have happened to you to this point in your life? Are you and others defining you by your past, by the things that you've experienced, the things that's happened to you that you had no control over, or the things that's happened to you that you did have control over? Are you allowing the lies of the world and others to define you? Sometimes, and I find this in meeting with people more often than not, sometimes the way that we see ourselves and the way that we define ourselves is exactly the opposite of how God sees us. What does Ephesians, again, that we read in, in chapter 1, teach us about recognizing our identity in Christ? Sometimes we live into the lies about our identity. Lies like we are unlovable. The fact that when I say that, it's like we are unlovable. That's a lie. Many of you all say that's cap. True? Lies like we are unlovable. That's a lie. God loves you. We are accepted, not rejected. We are set free, not held in bondage. We are covered in grace and not under the law of sin and works. We are adopted, not orphaned. Your how-to step one to overcoming these lies and recognizing our identity is to surrender our hearts and lives to Jesus Christ. You must surrender the lives, emotions, and attitudes to God and start doing the hard work of turning away and not believing the lies anymore. Then we must replace the lies with truth. Truth found in the Holy Scriptures. In truth, the person of Jesus 
and in the Word, the living Word. When we begin living out our lives based on how God sees us, we'll gradually move away from the need to find our value, worth, and identity in external circumstances and people. Last week we talked about the battle and the fight between our culture and Christianity. That battle is real. That battle is real and alive and well in our world. And our world tries to define us by its own ways and its own standards. The battle is worth fighting, though. It's worth fighting because the way that we see ourselves, the way that we define ourselves, it matters. It matters because recognizing our identity in Christ, living into who we're supposed to be in Jesus, it changes us. And when it changes us, it changes the people around us. Question. What difference would it make in your life if you started believing the truth about who you were created to be and the truth about your identity in Christ? What difference would that make in your life? At the core of what it truly means to be a follower of Jesus Christ, to be a Christian, is that we have a new identity. We become a new creation, a new person in Jesus, and in that relationship with Jesus, we don't lose ourselves. We actually become our true selves. In Jesus Christ, we truly begin to live. Again, last week, John 14, 6, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. If Jesus Christ is our life, his strength is our strength. If we are alive in Christ, then his love is our love. His joy is our joy. His peace is our peace. His righteousness is our righteousness. That's why we get to go to the Father, because of Jesus. I believe most of the struggles and the problems that people experience, that you experience and that I experience, is directly connected to our struggle with identity. Either we have not accepted Jesus as our Savior and our Lord, and we don't know yet who we are in Jesus, or we've done that, we're a Christian, we're a follower of Jesus, and we have forgotten who we are in Christ. Second Peter first, the first chapter in, in verse 9, it tells us, and I'm going to read from the King James Version here. He that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his sins. As a Christian, you must be careful not to buy in to the worldly, cultural thinking that our identity comes from what we do and not what God has done. Mm -hmm. We recognize our identity more clearly and distinctly by his truth. We define our identity based upon faith in who God is, what God has done for us through Jesus, and that results in who we are. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. We are new creation, created in Jesus Christ for good works that he's prepared for us to do in advance. Our being in Christ leads to us walking and living like Christ, as we talked about last week, living the way. Do you know why we can't find fulfillment in ourselves? It's because we were not created to glorify ourselves. We were not created to glorify the flesh. We were created to reflect the glory of God. The main goal of our culture is self. It's all about lifting me up. What's best for me? Everything should be about me. That is opposite to the way that Jesus showed us to live. It's not about lifting me up. It's about glorifying Christ. Seeking identity outside of Jesus Christ is all about bringing glory to ourselves. No one will ever find, you will never find lasting fulfillment, joy, and peace outside of Jesus. True life, the life that we can live to the fullest, is possible only in a relationship with Jesus. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh 
and the desires of the eyes and pride in possessions is not from the Father, but it is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. 1 John 2, verses 15 through 17. Our identity, y'all, is in one of two places. It's in Christ or it's in the world. And the world is us. <coughs> Is there something or something you're holding on to because you don't know what you'll do without them or it? If you would, pray with me as I close us here. Father, I hope and pray that you will help us recognize our true identity in a personal relationship with you. God, I pray that everyone that is listening and hearing now has trusted their life and surrendered their life completely to you. God, thank you for dying on a cross for us. God, I pray for that opportunity to be adopted. I thank you, God, that you have started a process of living in me and creating in me a different way to live, a different way to define my identity. God, I pray that you help each one of us find our true identity as a child of God. And God, I, help, I hope and pray that you help us know that there is, there is nothing that we can do, there is nothing else that can cause you to love us more than you love us right now. Father, I pray that if anyone here needs to know you as Savior and Lord and wants to be a new creation in Christ. God, that they find a friend that they trust, that they find me, that they find Wayne, that they find someone else that they believe in their relationship with Jesus so that we can, we can pray for them and we can share with them. God, help us to make the changes in our lives so that the only thing that defines us is you. God, we pray all these things in the strong and powerful name of Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You all have a great day.